Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. K is for Kroger, C is for Cut, B is for Beef. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef, and Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. That's right, ladies. Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste. You see, before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Yes, that's before the meat is weighed and priced. And that's why Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. It's top U.S. government grades of beef. Meat that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. Yes, it's a better value in top grade beef. Now, for example, let's take a Kroger cut sirloin steak. Before the steak is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes the stringy end, excess waste, and excess bone. So you get a better value because you don't pay steak price for stringy meat, excess bone, or waste. But whether you buy a steak or roast, you receive more meat, less waste. That's at your Kroger store. Visit your neighborhood Kroger store soon. Get Kroger cut beef and get more meat for your money. And now, hearts in harmony. A letter is often a great deal more than paper, envelope, and postage stamp. A letter can be an instrument of happiness or sorrow. It can change a person's life. A letter from her mother has made a change in the life of Penny Gibbs' friend, Peg Martin. In the living room of Penny's home... Peg says to Penny... Penny, I was rereading that letter from Mother again this afternoon. I I think I know the letter by heart now, but I still can't believe it. Oh, that's because deep down in your heart, Peg, you don't want to believe it. No, Penny. I don't know how many times I'll have to say it to make you realize that it's true, but... But I'm actually glad that my husband's dead. Oh, Peg, how can you be? How can you honestly wish anyone were dead? I can wish for my own safety, can't I? Well, yes, but... What do you mean, your own safety? Well, it's something I didn't want to tell you while Jim was alive, Penny, or while I thought he was alive. I didn't want you to worry. Worry about what? About Jim and what I always feared he'd do to me. Oh, Peg, you don't mean... I mean exactly that, Penny. I've always been afraid of him. Oh, not always, of course. Not when we were first married, but... But it wasn't long before I found out more about him. I saw how cruel and ruthless he was underneath. Oh, but you never really thought that he'd do any harm to you, did you? I not only thought it, but I had evidences of it. We had a, an innocent little argument one day. Oh, nothing at all to begin with. But before it was over, Jim threatened me. He threatened to kill me, Penny. Oh, Peg, he didn't mean that. that. That's just one of those things that people say when they're so angry that they're kind of out of their minds. He was out of his mind, all right. Went out of his mind on far too many occasions. Once in the kitchen. This was just before the baby was born, too came at me with a knife. Oh, Peg, no. And I think that would have been the end of Peg Martin if one of the neighbors hadn't knocked on the back door to borrow a cup of sugar. Oh, Peg, how awful. (laughs) That was just one of the times he almost carried out his threat. I still have a soft spot in my heart for that neighbor who ran out of sugar. (laughs) She was always running out of something. I don't know how many times she innocently saved my life. Well, why didn't you leave him, Peg? Oh, I don't know. Pride or something. Or maybe it was just plain stupidity. It never even occurred to me to leave him. And if he'd come back shortly after he went away, I, I'd have let him stay. It's just the kind of fool I was. You loved him, Peg. You couldn't help that. Mm, I loved him. I was afraid of him. That's a fine pair of emotions to have for the same person, isn't it? Well, love's combined with a lot of things. Love is a lot of dishwater, Penny. There's really no such animal. You're wrong, Peg. Oh, maybe. A lot of people haven't found out about it yet. A lot of people think love is the kind of thing you read about in the ads or see in motion pictures or find in books. Peg, listen to me a minute. Don't be bitter because your marriage was a failure. Oh, I'm not bitter about that, Penny. I wrote finished my marriage long ago, and I was glad of it. Now I'm glad that fate has written finished to Jim Martin. What makes me bitter is that people try to tell me there's such a thing as love. Oh, Peg, look, there is. I see it around me every day. Oh, you don't see love, Penny. You see people in a state of mental hibernation. You see people who've stopped thinking with their heads, who feel there's no sound more beautiful than the beat of a heart. In other words, you're saying that 
You can't use your head and be in love, hmm? You mean there's no such thing as conscious love? There's no such thing as love, conscious or unconscious. Marriage is supposed to be based on love and the result of love. But it's, it's nothing more than a convenience invented by society to give women some kind of security in a man's world. <laughs> Fine light of security it is most of the time. If slavery is security, then marriage is security. That's the best it offers. You're wrong, Peg. Oh, I admit that some marriages don't work out and that some people are better off not married. But... Well, add me to those some people. Keep me on the freedom side of the ledger. No more marriage for Peg Martin. Because I thought that marriage was love. I found out there's no such thing as love. That is, not outside of a book, a movie, or a magazine ad. No, sir. One of these days you'll wake up and find yourself in love again. Hmm, you mean stupid again, don't you? No, I said in love again. Because I believe in love. I know it exists. I know it does because I've known it, Peg, and I haven't forgotten it. Just you watch Freddie and Nora someday. They're in love and they're not stupid. They're young. They're blind or they've closed their eyes. Just wait till they've tasted trouble. Wait till they're a little older and they find out that life is They found out about life, both of them. They've both known more heartache than you and I'll ever see, I hope. Have they really? Peg, until they met, they'd scarcely known happiness, either one of them. But now they've found it. Peg, they found it in the form of love. Oh, Peg, it exists. Love is just as it is in the movies and in, in books and in ads. It, it's as real as, as Freddie and Nora are real. <sighs> Look, I lost faith in love once myself, but Nora and Freddie restored my faith in it. And I don't think I'll ever lose it. All right, Penny. Go on. Fall in love again or stay in what you call love, whichever you have to do. I'll try to help you mend your broken heart. But there's no mending tape or thread or glue or what you will that'll keep a broken heart from falling apart again at the slightest touch. Isn't there? Mine was broken in a million pieces once. But it's back together again, with hardly a mark to show where it was broken. Excuse me, it's the door. Uh-huh. It's probably Freddy. I sent him downtown for something. He's probably forgotten his key. Getting ready for Nora's party tonight? Yeah, about all the plans you made now. Good afternoon, Penny. Hello, Barry. Come on in. Well, I'm welcome for a change. Oh, you're welcome for a little while. I have to run a few errands for Mother pretty soon. Good. I'll be your chauffeur. Oh, aren't you working this afternoon? No, they're remodeling the offices at the factory, and the boss gave us all the afternoon off. Well, hello, Peg. Hello, Barry. Oh, why, so silent. And how can you just sit there when a handsome man rings the doorbell? Oh, Barry, maybe she didn't know it was you. <laughs> well, you'll have to put a window in the door, Penny. Think what a pleasure it would have been to be greeted at the threshold by two beautiful young ladies. Oh, Barry, you're too generous with your compliments. You better hold back or you'll run out of them. Not around here, I won't. Uh, say, did I interrupt anything? No, no, you didn't. We were just having a little argument about love. Is love is, or is love isn't? <laughs> Good question. What did you decide? We weren't deciding, Barry. We were arguing. Oh. Well, you do believe in love, don't you, Barry? I believe in anything that makes people happy, that seems to take the place of money, fame, good fortune, and good food. Mm -hmm. And they tell me that's what love does, so I vote for love. Well, whose side am I on, by the way? Mine. <laughs> Definitely not mine. And just because we're two to one now, don't think you can win me over. Don't worry, Peg. You won't have any trouble from me. I believe in letting people think the way they want to think. Hmm. Smart man. No, not smart. Just too lazy to try to voice my own opinions louder than theirs. Say, Penny, is there any chance of seeing your father? Well, yes, if you like. Well, uh, that's really half the reason I came over this afternoon. I want to talk to him about something. Oh, Barry, he'd be glad to see you. He's in the sunroom. Why don't you go on and see him? Thanks, I will. But don't go away, you two. I won't be with Mr. Billings very long. <laughs> All right, All we'll right. both be here. You know, Penny, I like him more every time I see him. <laughs> Do you? Don't you? Yeah, I kind of liked him from the very start, I guess. I don't know just how I really feel about him, though. I haven't given him much thought. Sure about that? Mm-hmm. Now, what is it to think of in regard to Barry? He's nice-looking, he's nice company, and he's pleasant. But that's all. <laughs> and he's nice and rich. Don't forget that. Oh, his money isn't important. Several million dollars isn't important. It's important money, but that's all. What do you mean that? Do you mean Barry's money doesn't make him, well, shall we say, attractive? Barry would be the same person, attractive or unattractive, without his money, wouldn't he? Mm, maybe so. But he's not without it. He's with it. 
and the two go hand in hand. Neither Barry nor his money interest me. <laughs> I hope you're joking. <laughs> Why? Well, I just don't want to think you're out of your mind, Penny. If I were you, I'd give Barry Carlton some very serious thoughts. I would if I were you, Penny. He's certainly serious. Golly, Gibbsy. Sorry I had to call you and drag you all the way downtown to help me pick out Nora's present. Oh, it's all right, Freddy. I had to come downtown for Mother anyway. Oh, well, that makes it a little easier then. Say, there's where I got the truck parked. Oh, yeah. Don't mind riding in the farm truck, do you? <laughs> no, of course not. Oh, you're really satisfied with that present you bought for Nora, aren't you? Oh, yeah, but the point is, will she like it? Oh, sure she will, Freddy. The way to be sure about a present is to buy something that you would like, too. Well, personally, I don't go for Nora's present for myself, Gibsy, because, you see, we men just aren't wearing things like that this year. Oh, that isn't what I meant, Freddy, and you know it. Freddy, you've repainted the truck. It used to be white. Yep, that's right. But white gets too dirty. Oh, it looks wonderful. There you go. Ladies first, oh, huh? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. My, but you're polite today. Yeah, I'm so polite that now I have to go all the way around the <laughs> truck to get in on this side. Oh, you should have gotten in first, Freddy. Eh, maybe so. I'm not going to go all the way around that sidewalk to do it. <laughs> hey, Gibbsy. Yeah? How do you like the way I fixed up the inside of this buggy, huh? What'd you do to it? Well, how do you like that? What did I do to it? I worked for days to make this crate something that you can ride in without getting all bruised up, and you say, what did you do to it? Why, I upholstered the seats and the insides of the doors. Freddy, and I... it does look as if it were a professional job. Well, it was. You know, I'm not an amateur at fixing things. <laughs> I know. Well, what do you say? You really like it? Uh -huh, I should do, Freddy. <laughs> Oh, by the way, can we stop at the baker's? I'd like to make sure the cake will be ready for the party tomorrow night. Oh, sure. Hey, uh, what time's party going to be, huh? Well, I thought 8 o'clock would be about right. We're going to have a buffet dinner. Oh, with lots to eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me. Say, uh, Nora still doesn't have any idea that we're giving her a party for her birthday, does she? Well, if she has, she's kept awfully quiet about it. In fact, she hasn't even mentioned that tomorrow is her birthday. Not for over a week. Well, I think she will tonight, Gipsy. She's going to ask for tomorrow afternoon off. She wants to go out to the farm and see her dad. That is, if it's all right with you. Oh, sure it is. I was only wondering about how to get her out of the house while we got the food ready and brought out the presents. Look, Freddie, we can't let her go to the farm. When her father comes in town tomorrow night, she'll suspect something. Oh, don't you worry about that, Gibsy. I'll get Nora out of the house for a while. You just tell me when you want her out and when you want her back. Good, thank you. I wish tomorrow night to get here quick. It's going to be a swell party, ain't it, Gibsy? Just the kind of party that Nora has coming to us. Oh, I hope it's going to be a good party, Freddy. I just hope nothing happens to spoil it, that's all. Will Nora's birthday party be the success Penny hopes it'll be? Why does she think something might spoil it? And is Peg Martin hitting that she could be seriously interested in Barry Carlton? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. K-C-B. K-C-B. K-C-B means Kroger cut beef. And Kroger cut beef means more meat for your money. You see, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat, less waste. Because before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Yes, your Kroger meat man gives you more meat per pound. And it's top U.S. government grades of beef. Tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. So visit your Kroger store soon. Order your favorite cut of steak or roast. If you buy a Kroger cut round steak or roast, notice that the Kroger method of cutting beef gives you a minimum of bone and removes excess waste before the steak or roast is weighed and priced. Remember, whether you buy a steak or roast, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. And remember, too, ladies... Kroger cut beef is available only at Kroger stores. So plan now to visit your neighborhood Kroger store. That's where you'll find delicious beef, top-grade beef. And there at your Kroger store is where you get more meat for your money. For Kroger cut beef gives you more meat, less waste. Get your share of this tremendous value without delay at your neighborhood Kroger store. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for another exciting transcribed chapter of Hearts in Harmony.